Hello everyone, I'm Jack Fisher and welcome to my world. And like many worlds with diverse pop culture landscapes, there are plenty of overdone gimmicks. They manifest in every medium. TV, movies, novels, video games, board games, you name it, it probably has a gimmick or several. Like death and taxes, they're both unavoidable and inevitable. And the world of superhero comics are no exception. If anything, they're more prone to gimmicks than most mediums. The sheer abundance of crossovers, retcons, reboots, and relaunches is proof enough of that. Then there are the many sales gimmicks involving variant covers and collector's items. And having followed comics for most of my life, I've seen and bought into many of them, some more eagerly than others, I admit. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. Most gimmicks are just harmless fun. They may not appeal to everyone, but if one gets enough things right, it can really stand out. And it can even spin off into its own thing. The success of Spider-Gwen, Miles Morales, Kamala Khan, and even Supergirl is proof enough of that. But by and large, gimmicks in comics are notoriously hit or miss. And you can usually tell when publishers and writers put little effort into fleshing out a concept beyond the barest of basics. And you can also usually tell when an idea just isn't working and needs to be abandoned as soon as possible. And that's a perfect segue into Heroes Reborn, a gimmick that longtime Marvel fans know well, but for all the wrong reasons. Now, if you were a comic fan in the late 90s, as I was, you recall just how bold it tried to be. The problem is it just failed miserably. The idea was admittedly ambitious. Reboot and retell entire segments of the Marvel mainline continuity creating an alternate avenue for major characters to emerge and evolve for a brand new audience. Now that's not a particularly bad idea. On paper, it certainly has potential with respect to reinventing characters who badly needed it. But the overall approach was, well, questionable to be kind. Now I won't get into all the messy details. I'll just say it involved a pocket universe created by Franklin Richards and artwork that has not aged particularly well. Just see the Rob Liefeld's infamous Captain America cover. But for comic book fans born after 1996, all you need to know is that Heroes Reborn was a gimmick, an ambitious but shallow gimmick whose novelty wore off very quickly. I personally remember losing interest after just two issues, and it wasn't long before the whole thing was just thrown out, retconned, and mostly forgotten. Then writer Jason Aaron decided to revisit the idea in 2021. Two decades after Heroes Reborn came and went, someone thought they could turn this infamous gimmick into something better. Now, I'm not going to lie. When I heard the announcement, I rolled my eyes. There are plenty of things I remember fondly from the 90s. Heroes Reborn wasn't one of them. And yet, despite my reservations, misgivings, and deep skepticism, I ended up really enjoying it. The story legitimately won me over. Yes, it's still gimmicky on multiple levels, but by Odin's beard, it worked. And the more I think about Heroes Reborn 2.0, as I call it, the more I find myself admiring what it achieved with the story it told. As to how it won me over and why it works so much better than its predecessor, well, that's why I'm making this video. Because I think Heroes Reborn 2.0 offers some unique lessons. And it's not just about turning a failed gimmick from the 90s into a better story. There's actually a larger concept at work here. And to understand, it's necessary to know the context of this story, as well as the characters involved. Like I said, this whole enterprise came courtesy of writer Jason Aaron and artist Ed McGuinness. Now, I've been a longtime fan of Mr. Aaron's work at Marvel. I think his run on Thor, especially while Jane Foster wielded Mjolnir, brought us some of the best Thor comics in decades. But his work on Avengers has been a lot less consistent. That's not to say it's been bad. At times, it's been really good. But for the most part, it's just mediocre. And the preceding arc involving the Phoenix Force choosing a new host felt like a new low point for his run. But Heroes Reborn 2.0 promised something different, darker, and bolder. Like its predecessor, it attempted to retell and reinvent some iconic stories surrounding certain characters. But unlike its predecessor, it did so under very different circumstances. And to explain these circumstances, I'll have to get into some serious spoiler territory. So, moving forward, you have been warned. 
Now, before the story begins, it posits a simple question. What happens to a world in which the Avengers never assembled? In this world, Captain America was never found or unfrozen. Tony Stark is still an unscrupulous arms dealer. Carol Danvers is just a mouthy Air Force pilot. Wakanda is nothing more than a myth. Thor is just a drunk with no memory of Asgard. Peter Parker is just a photographer. And Earth's greatest and only heroes are the Squadron Supreme. Oh, and Phil Coulson is president. That's a critical detail, but one that doesn't become relevant until much later on. Now, despite the nature of that premise, this is not some elaborate what-if scenario. Marvel already has plenty of those, and few ever get fleshed out to this extent. This particular version of Heroes Reborn organically weaves itself directly into Jason Aaron's ongoing Avengers stories. While those links are not readily apparent at first, that actually benefits the story, because it allows us to learn more about the why and how of what makes this world so different. And the biggest difference by far is the Squadron Supreme. It's really these guys who make Heroes Reborn 2.0 a much better story than its 90s era predecessor. And that in and of itself is remarkable, because unless you're intimately familiar with Marvel lore, you might not know much about them. And even if you do, they're the last cast of characters you'd expect to carry a story. That's because the Squadron Supreme are, to a certain extent, Marvel's bootleg version of DC's Justice League. These characters are very similar both in appearance and aesthetic. They're also not nearly as heroic, or nearly as likable for that matter. Hyperion is basically Superman, just less principled and a lot more ruthless. Power Princess is basically Wonder Woman, just a lot less honorable and a lot more violent. Blur is basically the Flash, just less focused and a lot more reckless. Nighthawk is basically Batman, just less scrupulous and a lot more amoral. Seeing the pattern here? Trust me, it's not meant to be subtle. Now these characters have been around since the late 60s, albeit in various forms. Most were created by Roy Thomas, but they were never intended to be parodies of the Justice League. Thomas himself called them pastiches, which is basically a parody without the mockery. It's supposed to be a celebration of whatever inspired them. But those intentions aside, the Squadron Supreme developed a rather unflattering reputation among Marvel fans. Because even when they're not trying to mirror the Justice League, they still come off as just less respectable ripoffs of better characters. And it certainly doesn't help that they often act as antagonists to the Avengers. And even when they're not, they're far more likely to clash with other Marvel heroes than any villains. Now, they did get a chance to play hero during the War of Realms event, another story written by Jason Aaron, no less. But even in that story, they never came off as heroic as the Avengers. More often than not, they function as agents of the government or as a team led by shady leaders with nefarious agendas, such as General Thunderbolt Ross. In essence, Squadron Supreme are state-sponsored villains at worst and unheroic heroes at best. They've always been that way, and it rarely makes for an interesting story. You read one Squadron Supreme story, and all it does is make you reach for the nearest Justice League comic. But Heroes 2.0 does something unique and overdue with Squadron Supreme. It basically takes this core aspect of who they are, being less noble derivations of popular DC characters, and builds an entire world around it. In this world, they are Earth's mightiest heroes. They are the ones who save the day against Thanos, Doctor Doom, Galactus, and the Red Skull. They get to be everything they strive to be. And there's no one else, no other Marvel heroes or legacy, to stand in their way. It's a unique opportunity, one the Squadron has never had before. And as Jason Aaron explores this concept, the world it creates ends up being uniquely compelling. Now, the overall structure of the story, along with its multiple tie-ins, are fairly straightforward. We know from the first issue that something or someone has changed the timeline. Something very big and very wrong has occurred to change the entire history of the Marvel Universe as we know it. But the story doesn't focus too much on what or who caused that change, not until the end at least. It places more focus on the thoughts, feelings, and motivations of the Squadron Supreme within this world. The main issues of Heroes Reborn 2.0 basically cycle through each member. The first issue just introduces us to this timeline, 
largely through the perspective of Blade, who ends up being immune to all these changes for reasons that aren't revealed until near the end of the story. But every issue after that focuses on the squad. It starts with Hyperion and goes through Blur, Dr. Spectrum, Nighthawk, and Power Princess respectively, before ultimately ending in a battle that reveals the truth of what and who created this world. We gain greater insight into these characters, because even if they lack the idealism of the Avengers or the Justice League, they still see themselves as heroes. Every one of them, despite their quirks and questionable methods, genuinely believe they're right and good and just in what they do. This is not a superhero story in the mold of the boys or injustice gods among us. These are not heroes who have fallen into villainy or are never heroic to begin with. The Squadron Supreme presents themselves as a different kind of superhero team, one that resides in the vast gray area between the Justice League and the Legion of Doom. They are not morally ambiguous to an extreme. They just operate with different morals than what we're used to seeing in our heroes. And honestly, that's oddly refreshing because that vast gap between heroes and villains is difficult to explore. Stories that navigate it successfully are few and far between. And Heroes Reborn 2.0 presents us with heroes that operate outside the bounds of other, better known teams. But they manage to do so in a way that doesn't make them feel like outright villains. Yes, the members of the Squadron Supreme can be assholes, more so than most superheroes, or villains for that matter. But the traditional superhero dynamics are still there. While their tactics tend to be much harsher and much more agenda-driven, they still save the day from villainous threats, even if they're responsible for some of these threats being what they are in the first place. But then again, you could say the same about many iconic heroes. It's part of the greater complexity of being a hero. Doing heroic things sometimes invites unheroic consequences. And Heroes Reborn 2.0, it just unfolds in a vastly different way. It's not better, worse, or inherently flawed, it's just different. And that different approach creates a very different world. In that sense, it's fitting that this story plays out in the mold of Heroes Reborn. Because in a very real sense, this world tells a story about a different kind of heroism. And we see it manifest in every member of the squadron. Hyperion genuinely believes he is standing for American ideals, just like Captain America or Superman. Power Princess genuinely believes in honorable combat, just like T'Challa or Captain Marvel. Blur, Nighthawk, and Dr. Spectrum believe in confronting and containing dangerous threats, just like every major Marvel hero from Spider-Man to Daredevil to the Guardians of the Galaxy. They're not jaded or cynical about it. More than anything else, they're just short-sighted and misguided, often oblivious to the consequences of their moral ambiguity. In multiple issues, whenever they muse over what makes them a hero, they're very aware of the risks. They're also very aware of their own flaws but their motivations remain clear. Even when they do things that seem to cross a line, as they did with the Hulk, the Scarlet Witch, or the Phoenix Force, they still see it as serving the greater good. And it's not until the Avengers reemerge that the flaws in their motivations reveal themselves. But it's also here where Heroes Reborn 2.0 does something unexpected, something that really won me over in terms of appreciating the story. Before it all comes crashing down, Jason Aaron makes it a point to establish something critical with the Squadron Supreme. In this world, they're not just celebrated heroes. They've managed to build and cultivate an entire life in this world. And that includes personal ties that really matter to them. Hyperion ends up having a close friendship with Peter Parker. Nighthawk has a partnership with Luke Cage. Each and every one of these characters has a place within this world, and it's a good one. Far better than anything they had in the previous timeline. As such, they have every reason to fight to preserve it, and it would have been surprising in the slightest if they were responsible for making the timeline. But therein lies the kicker. They are not responsible for the Heroes Reborn 2.0 timeline. They're just the benefactors. The true source behind it is much darker, as in Mephisto-level darker. I won't spoil all the details, just know that it's every bit as evil as you'd come to expect from Mephisto. The Avengers and the Squadron Supreme were just the pawns. They had their parts to play, but they all had to do a little extra in order to make things right. And that process of making things right comes at a cost, a very personal cost. Because even though the timeline does revert back to its previous form, as it often does with stories like this, it carries an impact that goes beyond that return. 
Suddenly, the Squadron Supreme are back to being the unscrupulous heroes of the Marvel Universe, once again living in the shadows of the Avengers. All the prominence they once enjoyed, along with the personal ties that came with it, it's all gone now. And for once, they can't entirely blame the Avengers. This wasn't something that was taken from them. This wasn't even another superhero civil war to debate the merits of heroism. This was them, the Squadron Supreme, getting a chance to see how great they could really be. And then it's all just ripped away from them? In a sense, it's really tragic. Sure, the Heroes Reborn timeline wasn't great for everyone. In fact, it wasn't great for most of the mainline Marvel characters. But it was a world where the Squadron Supreme got to be their best selves. Losing that, no matter how powerful you are, no matter how much or how little you resemble other iconic heroes, it still hurts. It hurts on a level you don't see in many stories like this, let alone one derived from an infamous gimmick from the 1990s. That impact is what convinced me that Heroes Reborn 2.0 was a story worth telling. It might not have won me over with the title or the concept, but it definitely won me over with the final product. In some respects, it established a new template for how these kinds of stories can be told. Heroes Reborn 2.0 didn't try to reinvent everything like the original, nor did it rely too heavily on novelty alone to carry the story. What Jason Aaron did was strike a perfect balance. It wasn't just another arc in his Avengers run. It was its own unique narrative, a vision of a different Marvel universe, complete with a new history and a different approach to being a hero. It even dared to turn the Squadron Supreme from a team of Justice League wannabes into better characters with greater depth. It actually made me want to see the Squadron Supreme play a larger role in future Marvel comics. And I certainly didn't expect that when I first saw the teasers for Heroes Reborn 2.0. Hell, I didn't expect much of anything from this story, other than another gimmick whose novelty would wear off far too quickly. But in the end, this story both defied and surpassed my expectations. I had every possible reason to believe that this story was not worth the time or energy. But wouldn't you know it, Heroes Reborn 2.0 convinced me otherwise. And for that, I cannot thank Jason Aaron and Ed McGinnis enough. And to all those fellow comic book fans who scoffed at the notion of another Heroes Reborn, I urge you to give it a chance. You might be surprised just how much you enjoy it. I'll leave a link to Comixology and Amazon in the description. Thanks for watching, everyone, and thanks for joining me in my world. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, take care and stay safe.